Madam Chairperson, Ms. Nelsonia Prasad Badram of the University of Guyana, Professor Ivla Griffith and uh, my fellow colleagues at the head table, members of the diplomatic corps, distinguished invitees, and when all the doctors were mentioned, I remember my days in the hospital. Students, and I'm happy to see you. I would have been happier to see more. Members of the media. Congratulations to you, the organizers from the University of Guyana, for selecting a topic like this as part of your talk and NTN talks. But it is not just holding talks. It is holding talks that are pertinent and important to our particular environment in this country. This effort is as relevant as any in facilitating informed and respectful discourse on race, reality, and reconciliation in our beloved Guyana. There's no doubt about this. You all would agree with me that the issue of race and ethnic diversity in Guyana is a very sensitive one. So sensitive that many times we prefer not to address it. Let me say there is common agreement that if race and reconciliation in Guyana is adequately addressed and properly responded to, the social, economic, and political landscape in our country would be transferred for the better. For this reason, I'm happy to be a part of this exercise. Hence, I laud you for your efforts. We in the Ministry of Social Cohesion have found consistently that all across the geographical divide of Guyana, Guyanese are desirous of living peacefully and harmoniously. In fact, when the consultation was done for the completion of the strategic plan for promoting and enhancing cohesion and harmony in Guyana, we found that stakeholders in all the regions of Guyana had five common key tension points in our country. And we did visit these different regions and we use different methods of consultation where we had face-to-face -face consultation, where we use the social media, Facebook, WhatsApp. We even used the radio. And we found that harmonious ethnic and race relations is one of the key tension points in our country that needs to be addressed, like that of citizens' safety and security, as well as social inclusion and tolerance. That these tension points need to be addressed if we are going to enjoy a socially cohesive Guyana. The inference is if these issues are effectively addressed along with the economic equity and job opportunities, inroads would be made 
for harmony in Guyana. It is sad, but it's a fact that our ethnic diversity, rather than being used advantageously to build Guyana, has been used as a mechanism to foster tension. And this is especially so, we all are familiar with this, at the time of our national and regional elections, every five years. It is not a secret that the, inse the insecurities that happened in the 1960s, that existed in the 1960s, which erupted into riots, and the troubles of the 2002 were rooted in this core arising out of ethnic, economic, and political differences. In Guyana, there exists that acquisition and that persistent perception that discrimination do exist on the basis of race and ethnicity, in economic relations, and in the exercise of powers by political parties and the way government functions to favor some ethnic groups to the exclusion of others. Importantly, these accusations have been leveled irrespective of the party in government. I'm sure that many persons recall the period between 1998 to 2001 a period where many persons felt Guyana was plummeting seriously to a place of darkness as the divisions and differences among us as a people were widening. What followed, however, was a period of intense political engagement, so necessary, that produced the Hormonston Accord and the St. Lucia Settlement. You may even recall that the party in government of that time agreed to shorten its storm in office by two years to engage in constitutional reform. Unfortunately, the reality is that political tensions continued after the 2001 elections, and coupled with the crime wave that followed the 2001 jailbreak, which time made out any semblance of normalcy. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to posit that the 2003 joint communique signed by the then President Bart Jagdeo and opposition leader of the day, Mr. Robert Corbyn, within the framework of a constructive engagement, was a significant effort to foster reconciliation. It was an effort to address the lack of cohesion and disharmony. You may also recall that this period ushered in a period where political and civil engagement across many divides grew rapidly, and it marked the establishment of the Ethnic Relations Commission in 2003. Let me take this opportunity to state that the Ethnic Relations Commission has struggled along the way, but the commission was recently named, the commissioners were recently named and sworn in by His Excellency in waiting for its first meeting to be fully reconstituted and functioning. When our history is written, our children would recognize that our history is fought with, fraught with tension, of which we are not proud of. But they would also recognize that these issues of tensions are not insurmountable. If only we are willing to allow social dialogue, negotiation, and conflict management to take its course in our society. It is the leadership of our society, regardless of our differences, whether it's political, ethnic, racial, or others, that must embrace tolerance. There must be acceptance and accommodation 
There must be compromise and meaningful reconciliation if we're going to achieve social cohesion. Some may argue that we need a Truth and Reconciliation Commission. That is debatable. Some work has gone into an evaluation of core issues perpetuating race tension and past reconciliation efforts by different stakeholders. We have seen the inputs of the United Nations through the UNDP for the Guyana Social Cohesion Program, which had the explicit objective of building national capacities for peaceful resolution of disputes. Stakeholders in the process included religious groups, political parties, the youth arms, community youth leaders, trade unions, civil societies, the regional democratic councils, neighborhood democratic councils, the private sector, and different social groups. I submit to you that the stage is set for us to frontally approach our race issues. We must be determined and be ready to craft approaches that would facilitate reconciliation. The establishment of the Ministry of Social Cohesion has been done with the aim of having an approach from the state to lead the process in assisting stakeholders to establish and maintain partnership within and across communities. It is to facilitate bridging existing gaps. This, of course, is in keeping with the vision for a unified Guyana, where diversities are embraced and the conflicts resolved. As the Minister of Social Cohesion, myself and staff are open for dialogue and discussions with the academia for us to explore approaches for reconciliation, which is one of the key areas in our strategic plan in policy development. Capacity building at the institutional level is also included. And I would be eager to discuss our issues, the realities in our countries, and the best possible approaches with any interested parties for us to have true and long-lasting reconciliation. Thank you very much.